Hello third grade. So today we're going to do our clay assignment and our learning objective for this assignment is to create a container. So we're going to create a bowl and we're going to use coils, rolled up snakes, to make our bowl and we can just make a simple coil bowl where it just looks like this, the bottom of this and not this orange part. Just a simple coil bowl or if you have time, which many of you are going to have plenty of time, you can make these interesting designs that can go on there, these spirals and these wiggles on the side of your container. And then when you're finished, we'll fire it and um, get it back to you and you can glaze it and it can be shiny and pretty like this on the outside, the color part. So let's get started. You're going to start with a placemat with the cardboard. You're going to have some clay tools on your table, which you probably won't need only but maybe a popsicle stick for this assignment. So I'm going to get a popsicle stick out. I really probably don't need any of the rest. And then I'm going to give you a hunk of clay. When you get your clay, you're going to pinch off a little bit and you need to roll it into a snake or a coil. The art term is coil, but some people like to call it a snake. Now when you roll it into a snake, you want to keep the palm of your hand flat and straight and you want to press gently and see, mine is starting to flap around on me. It's not really wound, uh, round, it's more flat. So what that means is I pressed too hard when it was here and didn't press hard enough when it was up here. So I'm gonna squish this down a little bit, try to make it more round and now roll. And I wanna do even pressure. I wanna roll from one end of the coil to the other so it's the same. If I keep my hand in one spot, it's gonna get skinnier and, and stay fatter on the end. So this is getting too long for the cardboard. I want you to make sure you work on the cardboard today. So when you roll out your coils, the clay should be moist enough that your coil will bend without breaking. And this clay is pretty moist. But I also want you to roll your coils out about the thickness of your pointer finger. So this finger about this thickness. Mine's a little, my finger's a little thicker than yours. So I'm gonna roll my coils out slightly smaller than my pointer finger. But this is a good size for a coil. Much smaller than this, your, uh, your container, your bowl, is gonna be pretty fragile and um, might even break when it dries. So um, a, thick, a good thickness of coil is very important to build a pot. So the first thing we're gonna do is the bottom of the pot, this part. And the way that you start it is you create a spiral. You take the end of the coil and you spin it around and make a spiral with the coil. And as you do this, you want to pinch it, pinch those coils close together so there's no gaps between the sides of the coil. I shouldn't be able to see through this coil when I lift it up. There shouldn't be any holes. If I can see through the coil, then you're going to have a hole in the bottom of your bowl. And your bowl, your container, won't hold anything liquid. It can still hold dry items, but it won't be able to hold anything liquid. Alright, so I'm going to make the bottom of my bowl a little bit bigger, so I'm going to take this Second coil, I'm going to attach the two just by taking my finger and pushing them together and then I'm going to keep going around. This is a good size bowl bottom, so this is pretty finished. I've got a hole here, you might not be able to see it in the video, but there's a hole between these two coils, so I need to push that together. And then since this is going to be the end, I'm going to take my finger and kind of pull that so that it's kind of flat and not just a chop off end that it's more round. Alright, now. Before I start building the sides of my bowl, I want you to flatten out and smooth out the bottom of your bowl. So the bottom of my bowl here, you can't see the coils at all because I, I flattened it out. This one here was not smoothed out, so the coils you can still see. Um, so I want you to make sure that you get a wet popsicle stick. This is probably the only tool you're going to need today, a wet popsicle stick, and pull this across your spiral. And this really makes your spiral strong and the bottom of your bowl real sturdy. So you're gonna pull that across. When you start to kind of grab too much clay with the popsicle stick, it's grabbing the clay. It's almost pulling layers of clay off there. Then you just need to dip your popsicle stick in the water again and then keep going. But you don't wanna get this too slimy, your clay too slimy. Okay, so there's the bottom of my pot. So I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna roll out another coil. And I'm just gonna start with a simple bottom of the bowl just to show you what you can make. Just a simple bowl out of coils, a simple container out of coils. Something You know what a container is. A container is something that holds something. And so our container doesn't have to hold liquid. So it doesn't have to be watertight. It could have some holes in it. Um, like this one here has holes in it. But it's still, you can put stuff in it 
and it's still a container. All right, so I'm gonna start layering my coils going around. Now this first coil, I'm gonna take my finger and push it down a little bit so it's kind of an angle so that when I bring my coil up and around, it just kind of goes up over it. And I'm, bring, I'm just doing the coils around the edge. I don't wanna put any coils in here because I want it to be a container so I want walls. I have a bottom, now I want walls. I don't wanna just keep making a spiral on top of a spiral. And now I start building the wall of my container by laying these coils on top of each other. And as I lay them on top of each other, I press them down so there's no holes in the wall of my container. And now you just keep rolling coils. You're gonna get really good, hopefully, at rolling coils today because you're gonna be rolling out a lot of them. Attach these two together and keep going up and around. And this is really a simple way to make a simple bowl. I could just keep going around and around and around. But I'd like you to try to do some designs. So one thing you could do is like this one here. You can do some spirals that stand up on the side. So I'm going to roll out another coil. Right, and then I'm going to make a spiral, just like I did for the bottom of my bowl. And you can make this spiral as big as you want. I'm going to make it kind of small and then I'm going to flatten the end of this coil out. I'm going to make another spiral. It's about the same size, so I'm going to pull that off, flatten the side of this. So three coils about the same size. Now, I'm going to put these on the side of my bowl. So the first thing I want to do is flatten this out because it's kind of chopped off the end of this coil. So I'm going to just kind of flatten that out. And I need to score and slip these pieces. Since they're not sitting on top of each other and they're that would be pretty sturdy, this is going to be um, pretty rickety and pretty um, fragile, so I need to score and slip. So I'm going to take my popsicle stick and I'm going to press crisscross lines into the surface of my clay. I'm going to add a little bit of water, which is slipping, and then I'm going to put those two scratched surfaces together and press that onto my bowl. So I want to press this onto the side of my bowl. And now I'm gonna put this one right next to the other one. So I need to score the side of this one because they're gonna be touching and attached. <clears throat> so I need to scratch, add a little bit of water, crisscross lines, and then attach these two touching. So now I'm pressing the second one into the top of the, my container, but also against the first spiral so that they stay stuck. And then after I push them, if it starts to flatten out or not look pretty, I can now start to bend them and make sure this stays a round circle. Please try to keep your container round. So keep going. It's gonna mis get misshapen as you work, but then just go back and make it round again. And so I'm gonna attach this one now. Press that down, make those two attach. And I could keep going around, make some more spirals and attach them like this. And let's say you get this much done and I say, okay, time's up. Then this is what you give to me. And that's okay. I had someone last year make a bowl like this on purpose with just a few spirals on one side because she was making a chair for one of her stuffed animals. Um, but I want you to work the whole time that you can work. So I don't want you to be done and say, well, I want to make a chair for my stuffed animal and be done. I want you to work until time is up. This is the, um, one of the only times you get to use clay. So don't just be done in five minutes. If you have time to work, add some more things. So now I'm going to show you a different way to add some design on the side of your pot instead of just spirals. Like on here, I've done kind of some wavy zigzag designs on there. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I need to roll out another coil. So first thing I'm going to do is kind of flatten the end of this coil out because I'm going to make it sit right here inside the side where this coil meets the side of my bowl. And now I'm just going to do any kind of random design. So I'm going to make this bend this back and make it touch that spiral, then bend it this way and bring it back. And then I'm going to bend it back again to come back and meet the spiral again. Like a big wavy or zigzag line extreme. And then set it on top of the last one. And now I'm going to bring this back down and make it touch the side of my container. 
And now I'm going to set this back down, press these together, press them against the spiral, and try to keep the shape of my bowl still going. So now I have something that looks like that. And then I'm going to roll out another, and I just keep building. And, I, and you can have as much clay as you can use during art. This is one of those few projects where you can have as much as you can use. So if you use up all that I give you and you still have time to work and you want to do some more, then come ask me for some more clay and I would be happy to give it to you. All right, and there's nothing that says you have to do sideways. You could go up and down. So I could come back and forth like this. And you're gonna keep working until you have your bowl completed or until time runs out. So you're gonna just keep rolling out coils and doing designs on the side of your bowl. And if you wanna make it airtight, you wanna make sure that you push those coils close together so there's no gaps. And you'll keep working and keep working. And when time is up, I'm gonna flip your bowl over and scrape your initials and the day you have art on the bottom and then we'll leave it to dry. I'll fire it and get it back to you to glaze. Good morning, third grade. So today you are going to glaze your coil pot. So you're gonna get it back from me and it's gonna be hard because I fired it and it's gonna be white. And so what I want you to do is you can choose a couple of different colors, um, maybe a color for the bottom and then a color for your spirals and maybe a third color for the dots if you did some dots, but you're gonna pick um, one or two colors, mostly maybe three to glaze your pot and you're going to glaze the outside of your pot you're going to glaze the inside of your pot but you will not gl glaze the bottom part that has your initials the part that sits on the table and when you glaze you want to put a nice thick coating of glaze on your pinch on your coil pot so you want it to be thick because when i fire the piece again the glaze is going to turn into a coating of glass on the outside and it's going to be shiny and a bright color and if you don't put a thick layer of glaze on your pot, it will not be as shiny as your friends who did that. You wanna paint your glaze all the way to the bottom edge, but not go over that edge onto the bottom of your pot. So you wanna stay on just the side, but you wanna get as far down as you can without touching the bottom. The reason that you can't glaze the bottom of your pot is if you glaze the bottom and I put it in my kiln, it'll get stuck to my kiln. I'll have to use a hammer and a chisel to break it off the kiln. Um, it fuses to the kiln, um, almost like glue, but worse than glue. So if you put glaze on the bottom of your pot, I will not be able to fire it and you'll have to take it home just like this. And you can see the glaze dries really fast and it starts to turn light and it's kind of a chalky feel and a chalky look to it. but. After I fire it, it comes out beautiful and shiny. So make sure you put a nice coating. If you have time and you have one full coating on your pot and you have time to put a second coat, I highly, highly recommend you do that. You'll be more happy with your piece. I find I'm more happy with my pieces if I put two coats on of glaze. So I put it on as thick as possible. Um, without having clumps. I put it on as thick as possible, the first layer, and then the second layer, I try to put on thick again, so I have a beautiful, shiny pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and glaze this, the red on the bottom, and now the coils I'll probably change to a different color. Now, and then I'll pick a different color for the inside of the pot, maybe. So now that I'm done with the red, I'm gonna get as much glaze off my paintbrush as possible. I don't wanna waste it and rinse it off. So now I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush off without wasting the glaze because I got most of it off there. And then I'm gonna dry my paintbrush off because it's really important that you have a dry paintbrush. And then I'm gonna pick a different color for these coils. And I'm gonna try and paint as neatly as possible right up to the red and also a nice, thick, even layer without chunks and clumps in it. And then after you get the outside of your pot glazed, then don't forget you need to do the inside of your pot. 
So I'm gonna come back on the inside here with this orange and bring that down the inside of the pot. A nice, even, thick coating. And if I have time, after I get my pot glazed one layer, if I have time, I go back with those same colors, not a different color, because that wouldn't make any sense, same colors and put a second coat or a second layer of glaze on so that it's even more shiny and smooth and beautiful. And when you're finished, you'll give me your pot back. I will refire it and get it back to you and you'll be able to take it home and show it off to your family. Good job, third grade, way to go.